My name's Jill and I live in Minleton on the York Peninsula and I was caring for my partner Elizabeth. Elizabeth had a stroke on the 13th of December and was helicoptered to Adelaide. And then 10 days later, during routine scans for the stroke, they discovered um, advanced lung cancer. So we'd been together for 20 years and it was a very exciting, very wonderful 20 years, which was why I was able to care for her in the way that I did. One of the things that I found really beneficial in working through some of my grief was to provide, uh, to write a brochure, uh, which is called So You've Just Become a Carer. And it's just got helpful hints that I've found um, through our experience. And I thought, well, let's not do keep the hard yards to myself, let's share that. Some of the things about how you as the carer are going to be absolutely exhausted and everyone's going to be wanting to ring you, talk to you. I had uh, three, four hundred texts and phone calls in the first three days. Contacted a granddaughter and said, put a Facebook page up. When your loved one is dying um, or is sick, Lots of family and friends will tell you what they think you should be doing. And I just found that there were times I needed, to, I knew what I needed as a carer. And I think it's really important to be strong and know what you as the carer need because it is going to be an ongoing process and you have to stay strong. Advocacy is is really important. Advocate means standing up for your rights and standing up for what you as a couple need in the current situation that you're in. You know your partner better than anybody else um, and you know what they will like and not like. So we've known what individual rights are, known what gay rights are. Um, and I guess there are a lot of people that don't know what their rights are. Um, to me, simply, it, it is about standing up for what you need at this point in your life. It was really important for Elizabeth to die at home. That was our joint wish. And it was really important to both of us to have that individual time together at home rather than in an institution. You want your partner to die at home, then that's what you need to stand up for. I had to fight hard. There's nothing wrong with being assertive and it's really important that you are because in the big city systems you can get run over pretty quickly. I think it's really important um, as a country person, rural person, to know what the services are in your local town and nearby um, because most city practitioners, through no fault of their own, know absolutely nothing. Every rural area will have some sort of services that are available, some might be more extensive. So you need to know what care packages are available and where they'll come from, what community health can do, who can assess the house to make sure it meets OCK health and safety, um, and just what other services are going to be available for you. And that knowing that information tends to give you a bit of a feeling of power. Palliative care worked with our wishes, which was really important, and it was a very peaceful process at home. Well, emotionally, of course, you're looking at the person that you love, um, and having to do lots of things, um, but that was also really satisfying as well, that I could do it. You think you've done a lot of the grieving whilst the patient's still alive, while your loved one's still alive, but it doesn't really count it starts afterwards and it's a huge process that you have to go through stage by stage bit by bit and it's incredibly hard what helped me get through the grief process was um, friends who called who visited um, who kept texting me um, family we kept in contact and going back to work was really important to get me out of the house. 
otherwise I'd have gone stir crazy. Uh, but you also need time to yourself to get through it in your own way. And some counselling. Yep. Ask questions and ask questions and ask more questions. And if you're the squeaky wheel, then so be it. <laughs>